All right, let's get the door. Hey, come on in. Welcome back to the Tiger Center at Lewis and Clark, 7th Hour Math Lab. Today we're going to be talking about Algebra 2. We're revisiting Unit 2, Systems of Equations. This is Practice 005. Hopefully you've already tried this problem. And today we're going to go over the answer. The most important thing with these context problems is reading the actual contest and highlighting the important points in order to write our systems of constraints. So, we're talking about at least 100 scientific and 80 graphing calculators. Well, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we write our variables. X will represent the scientific calculators. Y, the graphing calculators. At least 100 scientific. At least is a greater than or equal to sign. So X greater than or equal to 100. At least 80 graphing calculators. Well, Y greater than or equal to 80. Because the limitation on production capacity no more than 200 scientific calculators. So 200 scientific. X less than or equal to 200. No more than. No more than. And then the graphing calculators. No more than 170. Y less than or equal to 170. To satisfy the shipping contract, a total of at least 200 calculators must be shipped every day. X plus Y at least, so greater than or equal to, 200. I've provided a 20 by 20 grid to make it easier for me to graph it. I went from 0 to 200 on the X, which was the scientific calculators, 0 to 200 on the Y for the graphing calculators. At that point, we have to graph 1, 2, 3, 4, the 5 constraints. Let's start out with x greater than or equal to 100. So go to x is 100, draw a vertical line, and that's going to be everything greater than. x less than or equal to 200. We go to the 200, draw a vertical line, and that's everything less than. Now on the y-axis, the graphing calculators, go up to 80, draw a horizontal line, and that's everything above. Then we'll go to 170 on the y-axis for the graphing calculators, draw a line, everything less than. Then we actually highlighted what we call the feasible region, above, to the right, to the left, and below. Once we get that shaded all in, our feasible region, we can actually label all the maximums and minimums, the corner points. I just started out with A, B, C, D, and E, and labeled them. A, B, 100, 100. B, 100, 170. C, 200, 170. D, 200, 80 and E, 100, 80. Now that we have our feasible region, all the corner points, which will be where our maximums and minimums will be located, we can continue to read. If each scientific calculator sold results in a $2 loss, but each graphing calculator produces a $5 profit, how much of each type should be made daily to maximize profit. So we can actually write a profit equation. There's a loss on scientific calculators, so negative 2x plus 5y representing the profit for the graphing calculators. Now that we've got those constraints, we've got our points, and we have our feasible region, we can actually calculate profit for each of those points and then we can find out where the maximum profit is located. So for point A, 
negative 2 times 100 plus 5 times 100 will yield $300 profit. Point B, 100 comma 170, negative 2 times 100 plus 5 times 170 yields a profit of $650. Point C, the far corner, 200 comma 170, negative 2 times 200 plus 5 times 170 will yield a profit of $450. Point D, bottom corner over here, 200 comma 80, negative 2 times 200, plus 5 times 80, gives us 0, our break-even point. And then point E, 100 comma 80, that'd be negative 2 times 120, plus 5 times 80, yielding a profit of $160. Looking at the five values, we can notice that our maximum profit is at point B, 100 comma 170, giving us $650 profit. That means we make 100 scientific calculators and 170 graphing calculators. So hopefully we all got the same answer but if you're having difficulties with these, don't feel bad. Five different constraints out of a context problem can be difficult. So make sure you stop by the math lab, seventh hour after school, to get the help that you need to be successful, and then we'll give you practice 006. Thanks for coming.